This is the Keeping Your Seat at the Table uh, series. I am Charlie Bathgate. I'm the CEO of our operations here at St. Lucie Trading, and I'm joined uh, today and for the rest of this series by the founder of Trading the Post, one of our leading educators here at uh, St. Lucie and our family of, of operations, Ron Friedman. Ron, say hello. Hello. I should be a market maker in, in hats, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, dude, you got a you got a deep <laughs> a deep bench of lids back there. You, I have uh, to. If I, if I come on these webinars without a hat on, it's just it's gonna blind people. They're gonna be like, "What is up with that dome? Like, stop it!" <laughs> I know, but some people have like the lucky hat, like the rally hat or something, and and you're just like, "No, dude, different day, different hat." You exactly, know, I'm, different I'm mood. Up. Yep. We need sponsors for the hats. Um, That's actually, a good we need, idea. We need merch for our, we need hats. I like it. No, we need, we need like our own it. hats. Um, so this, we're going to do two things today. This is a series, as I said. And so there's uh, five installments in this series. And, um, you know, today is the first one, of course. And we're going to do two things today. One is we're going to introduce the series, you know, keeping your seat at the table. What, what does that mean? What are we actually talking about? What does it not mean? Um, and then and then we're going to go into the topic for today, which is um, something that Ranch and I had talked about leading up to this in terms of what is very topical for people. What is something that he's seeing a lot that he feels like, hey, I could really like, can I help people make an adjustment on? And that's, you know, overcoming what we're calling the, the biggest emotional roadblock for intermediate traders. We're going to go into that. We're going to talk about... Um, how Ranch has helped a lot of people kind of turn the corner on something that holds a lot of people back, probably holds a lot of people who are watching this back. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. This entire series is uh, in honor of um, a, uh, a new release, a re-release of the Trading the Post uh, educational experience, um, which includes a course and access to Ranch's um, uh, trading rooms and support, live webinars that happen throughout the day. I'll have more information on that uh, later on. But if you're interested in that, you're just watching this and you want to check it out, go to tradingthepost.com and you have more information on that. So let's start out and introduce the series. Ron, just keep your seat at the table. The context for this, for anybody who's watching the recording, it's Monday, October 10th, 2022. This year has just <laughs> eviscerated people, just eviscerated accounts left and right. Um, you know, and it doesn't seem like the, like doom and gloom is going away anytime soon. I mean, I have Bloomberg open on my other monitor. All the headlines are just, you know, the worst is, uh, the, the, the worst is yet to come. Like, <laughs> like there's just the shit storm is going to continue. Um, and it's not just like that markets are going down, of course, trending markets in either direction can be easy to trade. It's the, it's been the nature of the moves that we've seen in the market for the, for this year, um, for a lot of traders, veterans, you know, obviously new traders. It's been extremely difficult, extremely hard. And as we circled up as a team, and we and we were looking at okay, what what's what can we do right now to you know help people navigate through this this period and and draw attention to what's really working? Um, everybody was pounding the table, just being like. Dude, you gotta get Ranch out there. Ranch is—he's been killing it for this this year. His his like his strategies have been just like a model of consistency, and he's also taken down some really big trades. Um, so that's that's what we're here to talk about. And um, you know, keeping your seat at the table, Ranch. Like when you when when we were talking about keeping your seat at the table and that mentality of trading, what does that mean to you when you hear keeping your seat at the table? Like, what does that what does that actually equate to for you? Um, I mean, it just goes back to where I was early on and blowing up and blowing up to a point or a level where you are where where you can't where you can't do anything, you know, where where the where you have no money <laughs> or 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 you're or you're below, you know, PDT, a pattern day trader, right? So you've got to be able to in worst case scenarios at some point be able to to look at something and say okay this this might not be my spot or this th this is probably as far as i want to go i can't let my mindset flip to this is my last ditch effort and i need to make this work here or i'm done forever right it's more of a mindset of wow i'm here at a spot and i'm not doing well and i need to either figure out 
what I need to do differently and, and change that behavior and start to inch my way back. Or I just need to tap the brakes and, and just take a break and, and wait. But you, you can't, I can't, and I never will again, let myself be in a position where things get so bad that I get knocked out of the ability or the opportunity when things change to get back in. So there's there are just thresholds that I that I just won't go beyond, and it's different for everybody. Um, but I, I, you know, if you're if you're above PDT and you're kind of straddling the line, it's probably critically important to you to not go below PDT. If you're below PDT and you have a threshold set of let's say five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, like you don't want to go below that. If you're a larger trader, you know, and and you've got let's say 250k, a million dollars or or more that you've got in the market, and it hasn't been going well for you, you you have different opportunities for different types of trades when you're at those types of levels, where you have to make some type of adjustment. Or what happens is you knock yourself into a different category. So I'm always looking to make sure that I don't handcuff myself um, in in the types of trades that I like to make. There's nothing worse than being at you know one level and then being knocked down to a different level and then seeing a setup that normally you would take and crush and not being able to do it because you don't have the capital that you need and whether that be financial capital or mental capital that yeah. you need to be able to 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 take that trade it's 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 important for people to understand um where where that limit is for them yeah yeah i mean can you speak a little bit to what you see either what you've experienced yourself or what you see with people who have depleted their mental capital like if they didn't necessarily blow up but they're just their brain is shot through everything they've gone through like what are they yeah you can see you can see it in you can see it on twitter you can see it in places like Finviz. Um, people comment, right? And most commentary in those environments are driven by uh, emotion. And you can see and you can tell when somebody has an opinion or thinks something's going to happen. And because they put themselves in an environment like on, you know, in some kind of social media format, Reddit, whatever it is, and they say, you know, this is what I see and this is what's going to happen. And they want to prove themselves to be an expert. Like that's where people throw themselves on the sword for no good reason other than to not look like they were wrong in a, in a public format. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep, and I and I think that that happens to people a lot. I think that that is. It also goes back to what types of trades are 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 people making? What what vehicle are are they using? Is this somebody who's trading equity? Is it somebody who's trading options? Somebody who's trading futures? Like you know, crypto. There's so many different little nuances that it's just you know it it can be just an overcomplicated mess that is much simpler than people make it. I think so much of the, the the problem comes back to how much are you in your own way? Yeah. Yeah. And when you have, when you're so sort of mentally shot, I feel like a lot of the mental acrobatics that really good traders do, the pro traders do, like, let's say f just flipping from long to short on a dime, though, I feel like those moves doing that that sort of acrobatic feels way 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 harder you just can't you can't do those things when you've kind of put yourself through the psychological ringer unnecessarily right like yeah. you just don't have that flexible that mental flexibility i think th there's to me there's also a and when i talk about keeping things simple what i mean is you know if if you just simply look at a chart of the S&P 500. I mean, it is it's a downward trend, right? So, you know, one of the very simple things to to say and to do is is okay, if there's no news or catalyst that's pushing and you get these little micro blips of periods of time where, you know, it does come up and things look like they're going to be okay because the overall trend is down, you have better probability waiting for those areas on pops to get touched. And then the higher probability trade is is to take that for short. It's harder for a, a market in whatever trend it's going up or down 
to reverse what, what trend it's in just on the turn of the dime, right? So many traders, I think, are used to um, the last 10 years of, of relatively easy markets to trade in an upward direction minus the pandemic. But the pandemic was an anomaly because it was a V-shaped recovery, which right. happens, but it's more of an anomaly than, than what we're seeing right now. And so many traders, I think, are trying to find and call a bottom that they're ignoring what a bigger picture is. And if you just simply don't ignore what that bigger picture is, you won't find yourself in trouble as, as often as, as people do. But so many people want to make the call like, this is the pivot. Fed's going to change here. This is the pivot. Fed's going to change here. It's just not the case. It's just yeah. it's just not there. They're trying to create scenarios that paint themselves into corners. And I see so many traders just making that type of mental mistake. And they do it again and again. And after six weeks or four weeks or you know, this year, people are just tired. They're exhausted. And they they, yeah. you know, they they think that they have their their idea right. And time after time, they're just proven wrong. And it's it's nothing other than you can't you can't break a trend. You can try to catch where a trend breaks, but you can't time a bottom. I'd rather, I'd rather trade this thing on the way back up when it trades back, you know, when when it technically comes back and when you know we get more blue sky. Trying to call blue sky or this is the end of the storm is just a fool's errand. It's just really, really difficult to do. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that I was thinking about as we put the series together is I was like, keeping your seat at the table, it sounds kind of uh, defensive. I mean, it's funny when we tweeted this, when we tweeted this, uh, one of the tweets we put out around this was using this, this gift from, um, uh, from rounders, you know, and Mike, Mike McDermott in rounders is like his character. One of his struggles is, is he's always talking about like, well, you can't lose what what you don't put in, right? He's like super right. risk oriented, right? Yeah. Like, like he manages his risk. And the knock against a trader like that is, or a, a poker player, a trader like that is winners, winners don't play scared, right? Winners like want the ball, like all those like sports cliches of, dude, get off the sidelines, get in the game, whatever. I mean, for you, like, how how is keeping your seat at the table different than like, trading scared i guess i think so first of all i think for me the def the the definition of trading scared or when you hear people say it all the time scared money doesn't win it's like well that's somebody's mindset that's not like actual scared money right that's just somebody who's having a hard time trading and can't distinguish the difference between when they're in a good trade or a bad trade. And a lot of that comes back to, can you, you know, do you recognize what the issue is and can you correct either your own bad behavior or can you leg into something knowing that you have a particular habit or way of doing something and using that as the benchmark to say, I always make the mistake in this spot and here's where I need to go the opposite way. And often, right. I mean, I, I, that's, and that used to happen to me all of the time. I was re and I still am really, really good at looking at something that's either going up or down and saying, oh shit, like the, here it is. Like, here's the, here, this is where it pushes higher. Here's where it pushes lower. And nine times out of 10, that's the top or that's the bottom. And I've learned that that is part of the, the emotional game that gets played in the market against people trying to trade it to make that money. So if you're anywhere in between and you you're not picking the spots, you're you're quote unquote scared money, right? You're not somebody who can make an adjustment. You're just somebody who looks at it and says, "Oh gosh, I'm wrong and I need right. to shut it down." And now I'm mentally all scrambled because I didn't get it right. I think yeah. that I think a lot of traders live in that world and when somebody says you know, you got to play to win or scared money doesn't win. That's what they're referring to. In in my opinion, my opinion, they're referring to a trader who is, is just struggling to figure out the right place and to figure out the right size. And, or if they start winning, did they take their money off the table fast 
Um, you know, do they have the, the, you know, do they understand what it is that they're doing with a time frame and what it is that they're looking for? And do they understand that there's going to be some back and forth before, you know, that particular move plays out? So that's, you know, that, that I think can be a lot of, um, quote unquote, scared money and, and where, and where people mentally just find themselves. And it's not one of those things where you can just have a rally call and say, come on, you know, you're, you're a winner and you got to get off the bench and play, right? It's, it's a matter of, can you actually figure out what's happening? And if you can't, you stay stuck in that world, in that gap, and you are quote unquote scared money. Does that make sense? Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I think we, this is something we're going to talk about, you know, continuously throughout the series, but you have, you have managed your risk extremely well this year. Your, um, your losses have been kept to a minimum. Your, the, the number of losing days you've had have been quite minimal, but you've also had some really big, nice trades that you've taken out too. It's not like you've just been scalping, you know, teeny little bits every day and keeping, you know, keeping your range like super tight. You've, you've had some really big gains. And so that's mm -hmm. something you know, I think we're probably going to talk about that in uh, next week when we talk about the NVIDIA trade, okay. you know, we'll, uh, you know, we'll go deep into that, but that's just sort of positioning for this, um, for anybody who's kind of new to this and who's new to new to Ranch and his style. And, you know, I'm saying like, keep your seat at the table. So you guys are saying like just trade super small and, and, and just like, you know, scalp maximum a grand lose, you know, maximum a couple hundred dollars. Like that's, that's the world that you're living in. And then no, that is not, that is not the world that you have to live in. You're, we're not saying to reduce, you know, the outcomes to, to that. Um, but we are saying like, we're saying a lot of things that Ranch just said, so, <laughs> we're, but we're not, we're not, we're not saying that you don't have to live in like a very finite universe, um, just to make sure that you're managing your risk. So, um, I mean, let's, I, everybody knows their experience of what this year has been like for them trading. What has like your, what's like a typical, what, what has your experience been trading this year so far in terms of what's like kind of your average day like? Um, well, I mean, let, let me just back up a little bit and just start with how the year began. And the year began with, and I do this every year, is I look at the S&P 500 or I look at the NASDAQ, typically the S&P 500. My idea, my thought, my goal, what I try to do is get myself set up so that at the beginning of a year, I can participate in a long-term move in the form of what the foundation of what I teach is, which is trading the post, right? So you look at a year like this, after everything that we've had, I start the year out where okay, I'm going to be optimistic. We're going to get a little bit of a pull and then we'll be you know, back to where we're at to the point to where you recognize, okay, that doesn't, that, that's not working. That's not playing out. This is unlike other years and certainly unlike anything that if you've only been trading in the last 10 years, which sounds like a long time because it is, but if you've only been around for the last 10 years, you just, you just haven't experienced what we're going through Today, the only difference or the advantage that I have is recognizing and living through what was an environment that was similar to what we're seeing today. It's it's always different, but it mirrors things that have happened in the past. But if you don't right. know or you didn't live through that experience, you can't make um, a shift in in mindset. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so you're you're just like I've been through some wild ass shit before. So I've, um, I've seen I, some crazy yeah. shit and yeah. I've been through environments where the economy has been um, not good and they've tried to start it up again. And, you know, for whatever reason, it, 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 it sputters and then it fails. And then, you know what I mean? Until they finally balance and figure it out, it's kind of where we're, we're, we're getting to right now. I think what happens with the mindset is ultimately what I'd like is I'd like to be long. I'd like to be a bull. I'd like to get back into the core of the positions that we like to trade and, and ride that, but it's just simply not what it is. So I have to adjust, right? So I, I have, I have a, a, a back pocket full of strategies and I have to be able to recognize the environment properly to use that strategy. So 
there are a lot of people out there that look at what we do and they're like, oh, you guys are just leaps only. Like, that's dumb. That doesn't work. And it's like, well, no, it's part of the big picture, right? right. And because we're because we're in an environment where we can take advantage of swings, we can take advantage of um, scalp, we can take advantage of things like condors. Is it the right environment for me to take advantage of something long, long term? No, I mean we've we've tried. We've we've put some feelers out of some things that we think are quality that have been beaten up, but it doesn't matter, right? Like the overall picture has been down. The only difference is because we know how to trade around those positions, we put ourselves in a unique situation where we find ourselves break even or flat even though we're still long that position and that position just you know we we're just probably in the wrong spot at the wrong time. And that's just trading. But if if you're somebody that comes in and just trades and is a one direction only, and you just continue to get curb kissed, there's there's no there's no room, right? There's no room for you mentally to adjust and for you as a trader to adjust. So if you don't leave yourself that that room and that flexibility, you just wind up on the same fence. And and in this environment where everybody thinks it's finally over and it's going to turn. I just don't see it the same way only because of what I've lived through in the past. So I, it, it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but I am saying that I've been able to navigate this because of what I've seen in, in the past and because I recognize the opportunity that allows me to apply a certain type of strategy right? You, yep. I can't go into the market with a strategy and say, this is the strategy I'm going to use. The market does not care. I have to look at the environment and say, does this does this particular strategy at this particular time fit? And what time frame and how much risk am, am I willing to take? And that's, yeah. it, it, does, it doesn't get any more simple than that, but it's hard to implement. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like so much of what you do for for members is for the people in, 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 you know, who take your course or in your sort of educational experience is can be boiled down to you teach people the skill sets in order to be able to trade at very at, at any different, you know, market in every different time frame, right? The scalp, swing trades, long, you know, using those leap strategies, the sort of core, um, the beginning of the trade in the post uh, methodology. And then you teach people how to assess the market environment and to determine like, hey, how do I like, which, which one of these tools that I have is the one to use in this market environment right now? How do I know that? How do I approach this? And then how to manage the trade. And I feel like that, that is what, that's what the, the subject of today's webinar is really about, you know? And so we talked about this thing, you know, overcoming the biggest emotional roadblock that intermediate traders face. What we, and we were talking about this prior, you know, what do you see? What, what is that? What do you see people like struggling with the takes that knocks them out of trades that ultimately could be really good trades. Um, what is the sticking point that, that we were talking about? Um, you know, here, an example would, I, I, in my opinion is, is Netflix, right? Like if you look on Twitter or you look on FinBiz or whatever, so much commentary is, Oh, like Netflix, you know, at this level or this area is, is, is good to go. And then, you know, we're, we're going for gap fill and it's like, yeah, I, I I see that. We all see it. However, what people keep trying to do is they keep trying to, you know, to try and time that type of a move as opposed mm -hmm. to looking at it and saying, wow, it's been trading sideways for six weeks, right? right. So how, how am I going to put myself in a situation? And you've got earnings coming up. It's a catalyst event. How do you know? How does anybody know? that that area is is going to fill what if netflix comes out and says something um in their their earnings call that the market doesn't like and or, or is misinterpreted right what happens right everybody who's anticipating or looking for that as the, you know their event all of a sudden they get caught on the wrong side and they get beat up right 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 then you have this this big basket of of rinse repeat. This is what the market does to traders. This is the type of trade that that most people will 
get burnt out on. And it's because they're not applying a different methodology. They can still do well in a trade and set themselves up for you know a move in Netflix without having to pick and choose a side or a time frame. But if they don't know how to do it, they're, they're just going to run themselves ragged, right? It's like being out um, in a uh, in it, you know, it's a, it starts out as a sunny day, and you're you're going for a run, and you know you're you're in mile three or four, and the freaking storm clouds come out, and golf ball size hail starts coming down on your head, and you're out there in a t-shirt and shorts, right? Like, right. What, what are you going to do? You got to run for cover. So right. I think I see a lot of traders get stuck there and then they 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 just get disheartened and they take time mm -hmm. off and when they come back they're limping back and it's mu it takes much longer and it's much harder for them to get back into um you know having confidence and either trusting themselves or or what it is that they see and i i, I see that repeat and i see that as an obstacle there's a gap with um the mindset of traders who get burned by a trade and then all of a sudden lose confidence and don't trust themselves. And then they're not sure who to listen to or what to believe. And that's a dangerous, dangerous spiral for a lot of traders to be in really dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. So the, like the sort of intermediate version of the trade is really fo overly focus on the entry, right. And say, this is the spot, this is it. And then strategically and psychologically put themselves in a position where they can really only benefit from one type of move. And if they don't see it in that direction, then they're just like, I was wrong, you know, rip the trade out, lose money on it. Mentally, they're pissed off mentally. They've, they've lost, men you know, mental yeah. capital. And whereas, and, and, and that's just chalked up as like failed trade. I was wrong. And that's just like sort of an overall negative experience. Whereas, the, the, the quote pro move, what you're talking about is, yeah, your entry may not have been perfect, but that doesn't mean that the trade is a loss. Like I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to manage this thing. I'm going to work. I'm going to work the trade. I have like, there's a million different tools that I can use in order to manage my risk on this and evaluate whether or not, you know, this is a position that I want to adjust and, and, you know, different directions. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. There's also a, there's also a, um, what I also often see and what I think is a, a barrier, a roadblock for a lot of traders is, for example, if they come in with a certain size or a certain time frame, and then let's say the environment changes slightly, and all of a sudden, their size and or their time frame now gets put in into question, and they pull out of the trade, right? Like it's it's common to see somebody who says, oh, okay, well, this, this particular trade needs X number of days to work out or is looking for this particular level. But in between there, you know, you get these gyrations. Well, during the gyrations, somebody can flip from, oh, this was this X period of time for this price. And then the action that happens in between flushes them out of what they were looking to do for their particular trade. Typically, because either, and it's not because you picked the wrong spot, it's because you picked the wrong size and the wrong time frame for that particular spot. So it becomes a it becomes a game of does your level of patience match the trade that you're trying to make? Does that make mm -hmm. sense? You can't mm -hmm. you can't come in with a level of patience saying, I'm th this is this is a couple of week trade for me, or you know, this is a this is a hedge, right? Like we've been playing these spy puts this entire move down. And even when the market moves up, it, it, because of the length of time, my focus doesn't change on where I think that target's going to be. Whereas some traders look at it and they're like, ah, he's wrong. You're wrong. We're at the 21. We're going higher. I'm going to sell my puts instead of adding to them or moving to a more appropriate strike. And then they get hit hard with the plastic wiffle ball bat. And we all know what that feels like. And then you're just like, you know, you're just left with a red welt and everybody's laughing at you. And then you've got to start over. Right. 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 That happens find, over and over. Do you find yourself um, like of what type of position do you find yourself most often um, 
sort of adjusting and accommodating like this? Is it just across the board? It kind of doesn't matter. Or are you like, you know what? I often find on my like short swing trades, those are the ones that I have that I end up sort of managing in this regard and, and massaging a little bit more. I mean, I'm super. So here's the thing when it comes to like a lot, if I, if like the trend to me is down. So even if, even if something pops up, even if the spy pops up to, let's say, you know, the eight or the 21 or the, you know, a Fibonacci level, or if it's a, you know, an anchor or whatever it is, you know, I, I, my view is, well, if I'm further enough, far enough down the road, for example, these November 350 spy puts, I don't care, right? Like, I'm just going to ignore that. Whereas if I'm looking at that, and I'm like, oh, well, I paid nine for those. And now they're at 550. Like, that was dumb. I should get out of them. I don't even think that way. I'm like, that's not what it's for. It's not, that's not the purpose of it. Right. 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 There's a dog. Um, <laughs> he's, he's claiming his spot. Love it. He's earned it. He's earned that spot. He's earned it. He works hard. Yeah. Um, he's a shitty trader, by the way. He only wants to trade wolf. That's, that's <laughs> the only thing he wants to trade all the time. Um, but if you, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're shaken by that, um, or you, you know, for example, like a, 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 a scalp, like a scalp to me is going to be very short term, for example, like a Tesla trade this morning, I'm looking for flush, right? And I'm looking for flush to, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I can either catch this for, let's say a couple of dollars, a dollar, whatever it is. And if I get continuation, I'll get a short term home run, right? Like mm -hmm. if I buy something, um, if I buy a, you know, if I buy a, a Tesla put for eight bucks and it goes to 16, that's an awesome, awesome scalp, right? Yeah. But if it goes from eight, nice, and nice it goes, little 100% there real quick. I yeah. mean, those are great. They're, they're awesome. And you, you can catch those on a stock like a Tesla or an Nvidia, so, you know, less now on an Nvidia, but Tesla still has that, that juice to it. Um, and if you get it, it's awesome. But if, if you don't, and you're trying for it, and let's say you pay eight and you get out at eight. 50 or 845. What's wrong with that? Like that's, yeah. that's a, that's also a, a great trade. And at the same time, if you don't get your mover, you don't get your continuation on a scalp, you got to punch out. You, you just, you, you got to just, you know, you can't sit there and watch it go to five. You can't sit there and watch it go to six. You got to be like, this is where I thought it was for a scalp. This is where I thought it was going to happen. And it yep. doesn't. Okay, fine. You, you know, you tap out and you either wait for another spot or you move on to, to something else. Whereas in the case of, let's say like a Boeing, like Boeing, I know that I have to wait for what I look for are things like, Hey, there were, there were call sweepers this morning. That's fine. It moved up very close to a technical area. It moved up to um, a 21 and a, and a Fibonacci area. And I know from experience that this, whoever this call buyer is, I think loves to trap people in a positive way to the upside and everybody else follows. And I, ha I have to believe that whoever this trader is has something on the other side because nine times out of 10, it's a trap like Admiral Akbar from Star Wars trap, right? Like you're <laughs> fucking hosed, right? Like you are going to be a bag holder. That's right. the, that's the long and short of it. And it's like, okay, I've seen this happen over and over again at this area, maybe not directly to the penny, but at this area, look for fade. Right. And then we say, okay, we look for fade. And then we combine a couple of things to make it very easy to say, okay, we can kind of hang around in this trade or we should just take our money off at a particular area and and yeah. that limits either loss and or burning out your your mental capital and yeah. i don't look back if if i if i miss out on you know 5 6 bucks whatever it is and it's a scalp i don't care it, there'll be another bus right yeah. i don't yep. care it's yeah. okay yeah and i think so many people can burn themselves out right like oh i left 5 bucks on the table it's like so did i it's okay Welcome to the game. It's it's got it's gonna be there again tomorrow. And if you, if you learned from it, can you apply what you learned? But you gotta wait. You've got to be patient for whatever your time frame is. And if you're if you're in the wrong spot at the wrong time, you just simply get out of the trade. So I when, like if you look at a trade plotter for me on any particular day, I might have twenty trades, and of those twenty trades, two of them are right but the other 18 were very, very small losses. And, and the other two make up for those small, small losses and well beyond. 
right? So right. my my when it comes to like a scalp, I, I probably don't have a very good batting ratio, but my profits are good because I I make sure that my losses are so small that it's not going to bother me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's something you help people with a lot is, is disconnecting this idea of a loss from, um, importance. You know, you're like, you're like, it, it, it just doesn't fucking matter. You're just out there gathering data, you know, and you have, it's, it's one thing to say that, but it's another thing to actually feel like, oh, that number, what, what you were just talking about. I bought that thing at nine, it's at five fifty. That doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything beyond the data that it is indicating to me about the nature of this trade. It might mean that, yeah, I need to get the fuck out. It might mean that actually this is still a, a great trade for me. I just need to, you know, make some adjustments and and put on some exposure in different in, you know, in different places. Um and you know, I think we've seen a lot of people. I mean, we're gonna talk to to one of the um we have, a, we have a special guest coming on the third installment in this in this series, and that's somebody who's learned a shitload from you, and who I think is going to talk to this a good bit, you know, about um, what it's like to absorb this stuff. Because I think some people are probably watching this and they're like, you know, how do how do you know? How do you know if it's one of those it like like if it's one of the ones where I I just need to get the fuck out and cut my losses, or if it's one of the ones where I should manage the trade, you know? And right. um, you know, we can't like part of what you teach people how to determine we can't explain that all in the context of a you know an hour long conversation like this but um but you can know you can do that you know you can you can make that determination and you can make sure that mentally you're not burning yourself out while you're continually making that determination on a daily basis as you are always doing that's the nature of your nature of your game that's what yep. you do yeah yeah i'm always concerned with um how much do I have out there and how much of what I have out there am I willing to to lose on whatever trade it is for whatever time frame it is? And it, it's not just, oh, if I lose X number of dollars, I shut it down. Typically, it's am I in the right spot for this particular move? And if I if I'm not in the right spot for that particular move, I have to admit that and I have to find what the the next spot is right it's just it it's all about do you leave yourself enough room in your financial capital do you leave yourself enough room in your mental capital to play the next hand right yeah. so that's i mean that's how you keep your seat at the table and one of the things that i'm actually really happy about and um you know i i feel a lot of satisfaction with is there at, at this point in time there i don't think there have been more adjustments by traders in my room to where they've figured out what works for them at what spots so for example i may be taking a specific trade going a specific direction and somebody else in the room who has spent the time looks at it and, and looks at it and says i can't trade what you're trading ron i'm going to trade what I can trade, but at the same spot. So I'll, I, there are traders that I'll see that that are in there and they're like, you know, I'll be like, oh, I'm taking puts here. And then I'll see somebody else wrote. And they're like, you, you know, they don't make as many dollars or percentage wise, they might not make as much, but they they used it to what comfort level they have and they still right. had a win, right? right? And that's hugely important. And in this environment where things change so rapidly, and you hear so many people complaining about how hard or tricky and sticky it is. There are mm -hmm. traders in the room that have made great adjustments. And when this all finally gets, you know, done, those are the kinds of traders that when things go back to, um, you know, a, a, if we can get back to another bull market run, those are traders mm -hmm. who are going to make a lot of money in that, that next particular phase, whenever yeah. it arrives. Yeah. I mean, Chris, Chris, Katie, who you obviously know super well likes to talk about how one of his mentors says there are days when the market just gives out free money and True. your job, your job is to be there on yep. those days. And what you're talking about of giving like of people having the skill sets and the toolkit to be able to manage positions the way that they need to, to do it in a way that is mentally sustainable for them means yeah. that they're going to have, they're going to, their ass is going to be sitting in front of the screen and able, and they will be there when, the market's giving out free money, you know, when things get easier, because there will be a time when things do get easier and that, you know, that will happen versus the people who are like 
grinding and army calling, and like they're yeah. in their own personal war, like they're just they're not gonna be there. You know, they they might have actually blown up, or they might just mentally just be like, I am fucking done. I can't, you know, I I can't do this. And then the next yeah. day, you know, for sure, this market's rigged. This is, you know, what I mean. Or, yeah, of course it is. You know, can you figure out how it's rigged? If you can figure out how it's rigged, you can give yourself probability to succeed. It doesn't mean you're going to, but what you what you're looking for is is finding that probability so that you can take some risk and and taking an appropriate amount of risk. And when it doesn't work, to admit it and tap out, right? Because if you find a spot and you're wrong, there's there's no staying in the trade and saying, oh, well, I'm just going to wait for this level and then do it again, depending upon your, your time frame or how much you push in. Everybody who comes in thinking, you know, I've got a $25,000 account or whatever the, you know your number is, and I, I want to move all of that money in at this spot and then, you know, double, like that's just not a healthy approach, right? Yeah. That just lead, that just leads to trouble. And and there are a lot of traders that just don't have the patience to wait. And then the people that do catch those moves and, you know, get to high five, the person who wasn't patient is the guy standing in line at Starbucks, right? Waiting for his coffee, telling you about how they made that call, right? Yep. Don't want to be the guy. I mean, you're talking it, it, shit waiting in line at Starbucks. Don't I that saw guy. that coming. I was there. I just missed that trade. And you're like, are you sure? I don't think so. Hey, this creamer is empty. Can you go fill this for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Lucy, who is one of like the the kind of all-stars in the trading the post room, um, just said to, you know, Ron sets alerts too, which is a great way to save cycle you know, psychological capital by not staring at charts all day. So yeah, there's a bunch of little like tricks and, and little, you know, things you can do, yeah. hacks you can do that can save you time and energy here and there. And, and, you know, Ronch, Ronch teaches those things. Um, and then there's also just like a broader sort of strategic toolkit and stance, mental stance that you can take. Um, yeah. and I don't know. I mean, I feel like sometimes the, the glamorizing of the struggle of trading and what like a just the daily battle that it is a siege and i feel like there's so much investment <laughs> in that because people want in some ways people want to be able to like you know beat their chest and say this is what i do every day i you know i i suit up and i go to war every day and when you talk to like veteran really experienced traders they're just like dude i just want this to be easy i got a life to live like I'm trying to maximize my profits and and max and and minimize the amount of like mental turmoil, you know, that I have to go through on a daily basis because we've all seen the dude who's making a lot of money and who's completely miserable and nobody wants that either. Like that's what you know, come on, what yeah. are we doing here? What's the yeah. purpose of it all? Yeah. Um, I got one more question for you. I want to give um, a little more of an in-depth plug for the Trading the Post course that we have coming out. So um, the we th this is basically like a combination of, of what you get. Um, I'm pulling up tradingthepost.com here so y'all can see it. You can just go there now if you want. Um, basically, what we're doing is we, we released the Trading the Post course. Um, I believe the first time we re released it was earlier this year. I think it was earlier this year. Um, and Ranch taught, um, did an incredible job teaching, you know, um, uh, a, a, a lineup of, of classes that teaches what he does, how he does it, you know, from like the sort of core Trading the Post methodology, which is, you know, as we've talked about a little bit, like sort of establishing a lead position and trading around that, um, all the way through to, everything else that he does on a daily basis, which is a lot of times it has nothing to do with trading leaps. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's scalping short-term positions. It's, it's, you know, um, it's, it's, um, options using option structures, like, you know, iron condors and stuff like that. Like there's, he's basically just teaching you a versatile skill set of how to use options in different market conditions and in, over different time frames. Um, so that course, th those classes are there. Those are, those are recorded. You obviously get access to those. And then we're updating, um, you know, Rancho is going to be teaching some new classes live for this, um, which are for, for this new, um, sort of release, 
which is really about teaching to the current market environment, right? So we always get feedback from from people in our courses. Hey, what can we what can we add in? What can we do better? Ranch is going to um, teach to some of those like questions that people had, and then a lot of it is really about like how do you specifically what's going on right now with the shit show that that the markets are like. How do you trade this? How do you manage this? How do you how do you make your way through it? Um, that is something that that Raj is going to be teaching in these classes. There's also going to be a particular focus too on trading with slightly smaller accounts. So Ranch trades with a sizable account, um, but he's also going to be opening up a new account, which is going to be slightly over PDT, but not significantly so. And he's going to be trading that as basically just like a sample account, right? So this is just going to be a way to um, to really tease out like anything that is particular to traders who are doing this with, with, you know, slightly smaller accounts, like how do you do this? How, how do you apply some of these methods that, you know, there's going to be strategies that aren't available to you with slightly smaller account than compared to if you have, you know, a uh, portfolio margin or, you know, a million dollar account or something like that. We're going to make sure that Ronch is, um, is teaching to those things as well. And then, so you're getting like this, the education you're getting, you know, this, uh, these like sort of teaching windows and modules with, with Ranch. Um, but the other thing that you're getting is access to Ranch during the day to Ranch and to the, you know, the trading the post community. So Ranch's rooms, he's really built up like a pretty incredible group crew of, of, uh, traders in his rooms who are, I gotta say like tremendously supportive of new people coming in. Um, and then of course, Ranch is in there every day. And what we've, you know, we've been running these, um, we've been teaching traders how to trade for, you know, 12 years now. And one of the things that we've really learned is you need the combination of just straight up education. So someone like Ranch teaching you how to do it. And then, which is often happening at night or, you know, on your own time asynchronously followed up with reinforcement of that and um, modeling of that in, you know, during live market hours, right? So what, how are you seeing it play out during the market? Like, okay, I'm in a position. What, what how do, how do I manage this? Like, you know, what, how should, how should I work through this? Like seeing Ranch actually talk about, this is what I'm doing now. This is why, this is how I'm adjusting this. This is why I'm getting out of that. Um, you know, seeing that sort of played out and reinforced every single day, you know, you get that, you get three months of access to, uh, to Ranch in that capacity. So you kind of get this this, um, you know, two sides of the coin there to, to really reinforce, um, everything that Ranch has to teach. So we're going to be starting the live classes, um, at the end of the month. So I think that they are, let's see, when are we actually starting these things? I think we said the 31st. Yeah. Halloween. I think we're gonna be starting teaching these on Halloween. So, um, yeah, some spooky ass shit. So we got, um, so, you know, certainly plenty of time. If you guys have questions, feel free to email us um, at uh, contact at singluji.com. <clears throat> if you've been in the platform, oh, and if you're a member of, of the master course at the Steam or anything like that, definitely check out from within the platform. There's, there's a built-in discount for you there on this whole experience. So if you have questions, hit us up. Um, we'll be talking about this throughout the, uh, the rest of the series, but that's kind of the, the long and short of it. So... Um, yeah, and we've got some people who are in the chat right now who are speaking up, speaking to the impact that Ranch has had on them. Um, suffice to say, he's he's literally changed some people's lives with with what he's taught them. So um, we like to toot his horn because he doesn't like to toot his own horn himself, and that's our job. That's what we have to do. Um, so Ranch, like my last question for you to kind of get out of here on this is. You know, if you were talking to somebody who you saw had this tendency, right? Somebody who's just like emotionally gets really attached to a certain outcome of the trade and then it doesn't move in the way that they, you know, they think it should. And then, you know, they mentally check out, they, they pull the ripcord. Um, if you could give them, this is not somebody who's like in your room, right? This is like, you're at the bar, you're paying your tab, drink's done. And he's like, well, what, what should I do? How do I do this? Like, what is your one piece of advice for that trader to be like, well, maybe try focusing on this, maybe try doing this. What would you tell that person? Uh, I mean, it, that's, that's hard because 
there's not one, th- I don't think there's one thing you can tell somebody in that scenario. I, th- I think yeah. the best thing to tell somebody in that scenario is stop, take a break and, and, and find somebody who you can start to work with that can teach you or at least help you understand why you continue to repeat those particular behaviors. Yeah. And I, and I think that that fits so many people, right? So many people just are, I hear it so often, you know, I'm, I'm good at catching like an entry. I, I suck at getting out, right? I don't know where to get out or every time I touch something, it goes down, you know, the mark, you know, the market hates me. And it's just like, just stop, stop, take your foot off the gas and find somebody to help you, right? Yeah. Go back and, and, and learn some more things before you just continue to throw your good money down the drain. It just don't, just don't do it. Just stop. Just chill. Yeah. Gets, get a new voice into the conversation basically, because the only come, the only voice in this conversation right now is your own head and you're, it's not working. You're going We've all had to pause, struggle. right? Everybody. Yeah. I mean, even pros, like there will come a time where I won't have a read, right. And It'll it'll take me a couple of weeks to get out of a funk. It happens. Yeah. It happens to everybody. I'm I'm human. I'm gonna make mistakes. It's 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 part of being a trader, which is why I one of the reasons why I don't like running around saying, look how cool we are, right? It's it's like because you can't be right a hundred percent of the time. It's not a thing, right? It's not a thing, but you can do well if you recognize when to hit the button to say, okay, I gotta stop here. If you can do that, you can live, keep your seat at the table for another hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. And somebody's at, somebody's asking, I just want to talk to others real quick. Somebody's asking, yeah. is there a room where I post my trade? So in the trading the post room, if I'm taking a trade, it's it, it goes up there um, and it can be, you know, all you have to do is type in my handle and you can see what my commentary is throughout the day. So if I'm trading something, you'll see it. And what Charlie's talking about with a small account is we'll we'll post it and you'll be able to see the trades. You'll be able to see the time the trade goes off, when it opens, when it closes, you'll be able to see it there as well. So right now the posting is, is you see it in the room. Uh, I do it live. I trade live the first hour of every morning. Um, so that's a, that's a great place to come in if you're looking to catch trades as well. But my whole, my whole mission is to teach you how to fish, not to follow what I do click by click. And if you can open your mind to that, you will find success. Like a lot of the traders in the trading, the post room, they don't try to emulate everything I do. They, they take what I do and then they adapt it to what works for them whether that means taking the opposite side of my trade or applying a different strategy than the strategy that I'm using that works for them. Yeah. And Matt was just saying, you know, we, we've got all sorts of bells and whistles in our platform. It's a custom built platform that is, you know, proprietary to us to make it easier to follow along with what Ranch is doing. I mean, there is a filter that you can put on with messages that will show you just messages from, from Ranch if you want, you know, so that, you're not looking at other people's, you know, other people from the community or whatever, if, if, for, for whatever reason for you, that's noise. Fine. You just cut it out. You just follow what Ranch is doing. Um, you know, we make it really easy to, to absorb, uh, you know, pick up what he's putting down. So, um, Ranch, thank you for, for doing this. Thanks to everybody who's, who's been watching this next week. We're continuing the series next Monday. We're going to go deep into, uh, a great trade from, from this year from Ranch, this NVIDIA trade. And, just kind of take it apart, dissect it and, and look at, you know, I, I think that there's going to be a lot that people can learn just from that experience, but also it might be an indicator for, for some people, um, that if they want to go deeper into, into what you do, you know, that'll be a good way to, to, I think, get a view into what you do. So, okay. Awesome. Cool. All right, everybody. Thank you for being here. Ranch. Appreciate it as always, man. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks everyone. See you next week. Bye. Yeah.